हेलो बच्चों लेट सी दिस क्वेश्चन इन अ पोटेंशियल मीटर सर्किट अ सेल ऑफ ई एम एफ वन पॉइंट फाइव वोल्ट गिवस बैलेंस पॉइंट एट थर्टी सिक्स सेंटीमीटर लेंथ ऑफ दी वायर इफ एन अदर सेल ऑफ ई एम एफ टू पॉइंट फाइव वोल्ट रिप्लेस द फर्स्ट सेल देन एट वॉट लेंथ ऑफ दी वायर द बैलेंस पॉइंट अकर्स नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन दिस क्वेश्चन इन्वॉल्व अ वेरी बेसिक एप्लीकेशन ऑफ पोटेंशियल मीटर सो इन दिस केस वॉट वी विल डू द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी विल डू इज ड्रॉ द डायग्राम ऑफ द पोटेंशियल मीटर सो वॉट वी नो इज वी हैव अ पोटेंशियल मीटर बैटरी रियोस्टिट and finally the potential meter wire starting from a going till b right now we have a cell having some internal resistance a galvanometer attached and with this we have a jockey correct similarly we have another cell some internal resistance and this so initially the value of the external cell the this particular cell is given as 1.5 volt correct and this is being balanced at a length of 36 cm so can we say this value which is e1 which is e1 can be written as e1 directly proportional to 36 cm correct now another cell is attached to it which is 2.5 volt and this is e2 this e2 cell is connected with the galvanometer and finally with this particular circuit and 1.5 volt is disconnected so can i say in the next case e2 is directly proportional to some length of the wire which we need to calculate now since these proportional this proportionality signs are similar therefore if we divide this proportionality will get cancelled out and we would get e1 upon e2 is equal to 36 divided by L, where the value of e1 is 1.5 and e2 is 2.5 and therefore i can write down 1.5 upon 2.5 is equal to 36 by l cancelling out with a common factor of 5 i would say this is 3 this is 5 3 again gone with this so l would become 60 cm hence the final answer for this particular question becomes 60 cm i hope each and every one of you have understood this thank you okay so the next question is a small block slides down on a smooth inclined plane starting from rest at time t is equal to 0 let sn be the distance traveled by the block in the interval n minus 1 to n then the ratio sn upon s of n plus 1 is now when we talk about sn it is the distance traveled by the block from n minus 1 second to n second and when we are talking about s of n plus 1 it is a distance traveled by the block from n second to n plus 1 second so first let us draw the diagram and try to understand the condition given in the question which is like this so we have a block over here let us say it is having some mass m okay now since in this particular question it is a smooth inclined plane therefore there is no friction and the only force acting on this is the gravitational force and we know that the gravitational force would be acting in the vertically downward direction the component of this would be if this is theta this would be mg sin theta which would be responsible for moving this block along the incline in the downward direction so can i say the acceleration would be the net force upon the mass which is equal to g sin theta right so this is the acceleration now let me try to calculate the value of sn so can i say that sn is the total distance traveled in n seconds minus the total distance traveled in n minus 1 second since the initial velocity is zero so if i use the expression s is equal to ut plus half of at square here because u is 0 because the initial velocity is 0 i can write down this as half of at square right and since we are talking about first n seconds and then minus of n minus 1 seconds so shall we write down this as half of a into n square minus half of a into 
n minus 1 whole square. Correct. And what would be s of n plus 1? It would be half of a into, in place of n, it would be n plus 1 minus half of a into n square. Now, just divide these values as asked in the question. So, can I write down this as half into a into what? n square minus of n square minus 2n plus of 1 whole upon half of a into n plus 1 whole square that would give me n square plus 2n plus 1 minus of n square. I hope you are able to understand till this point. If yes, can we cancel out half of a and half of a from here? We Can, can we also cancel this n square values from the numerator and the denominator? What we will get? We would get this as 2n minus of 1 whole upon 2n plus of 1 which would be the final answer as asked in the question. So let us match the answer that we have got with the options given in the question. So 2n minus 1 upon 2n plus 1, this looks correct. This is wrong, this is wrong and this is wrong. So the final answer for this particular question is option 1 and I hope each and every one of you have understood the question as well as the concept behind this particular question in the solution and the explanation provided to you. Thank you. Okay, so the question says that a parallel plate capacitor has a uniform electric field E in the space between the plates. If the distance between the plates is T and the area of each plate is capital A, the energy stored in the capacitor is given by. So we need to find out the energy stored in the capacitor. Now if you remember, the energy stored in the capacitor is given as half of Cv square. Now this is the total energy stored, but we don't have any option which is exactly matching with the one that we have written. So what we will do? Uh, can we? Do we also remember that energy per unit volume is given by half times epsilon naught into e square? Yes or no? And what is this volume? This volume is the volume between the parallel plates of the capacitor. So can I write down E is equal to half times epsilon naught e square into volume. Volume is what? If you talk about the volume of the capacitor, the plate area if it is given as A and the separation between them is given as D. So the volume would be what? A into D. So can I say the final answer to this particular question that is the energy between the plates of the capacitor is given as half of epsilon naught e square into, into what? Volume A into D. Let us look at the options. So option 1 becomes wrong. Option 2 looks perfect, option 3 is wrong and option 4 is wrong. Hence the final answer for this particular question becomes option 2 and I hope each and every one of you have understood this. Thank you. Okay, so the question is match column 1 and column 2 and choose the correct match from the given choices. So we have column 1, there are certain values, there are certain words written over here and we need to code this or map this to column 2 values. So the first one is root mean square. So when you talk about root mean square velocity or root mean square, what do you call it as speed, then can we say that this is equal to under root of 3 RT by M where R represents the gas constant, T represents the, abs the temperature in kelvins and M represents the molecular weight. So this is equal to what? This is matching with Q. Pressure exerted. Now if you remember, the kinetic gas equation is PV equal to 1 by 3 MNV RMS square and by this relation where n is capital n or total number of molecules and if you take v downwards can i say that this is being mapped with p average kinetic energy of a molecule so when we talk about average kinetic energy of a molecule we say that the single molecule is being talked about if a single molecule is being talked about can i say that is equal to 3 by 2 kt so this is what this is s total internal energy of one mole of a diatomic gas and that is equal to for a diatomic gas it is total internal energy we are talking about degree of freedom is what 5 so that would be 5 by 2 into rt so this would be equal to r so the correct mapping would be q p s and r and looking at this uh, we can say that option a is wrong when we talk about option 2 this is correct c it is wrong, third one is wrong and the fourth one is wrong. So the correct answer for this would be option 2. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is the velocity of a small ball of mass capital M and density D when dropped in a container filled with glycerine 
becomes constant after some time. So after some time, the velocity becomes constant. That means the net force on it becomes zero. If the density of the glycerine is given as d by 2, then the viscous force acting on the ball will be. So what will be the viscous force we need to calculate? So let us say that we have a ball like this, whose mass is given as m. So the first force that comes to our mind is the force due to gravity that is equal to mg. But can we write down that mass m can be written as density d into volume v? Yes or no? Now if you have understood this, can I say the first force that would be acting is the gravitational force that is equal to mg which could be written as like this. The second force that would be acting in this particular liquid is the force of buoyancy. So can I say I would have a force of buoyancy which is equal to density of the liquid which is given as d by 2 into volume displaced which is the complete volume so it is d by 2 into v into g and the third force which we actually need to calculate is the viscous force which is written as f v. So these are the three forces that are being acted upon on the on, by the by the surroundings on the ball. Now after some time the velocity becomes constant that means the net force on it becomes zero therefore the net downward force is equal to the net upward force. So shall I write down this as d v g is equal to d by 2 into v into g plus f v. So viscosity or viscous force is equal to d by 2 into v into g. Now mass is written as d into v. So can I write down this as mg by 2. So the final answer to this particular question which is calculating viscous force is mg by 2. Option 1 becomes wrong, option 2 is wrong, option 3 is wrong, option 4 is perfect. Hence the final answer is option 4 and I hope you have understood the concept as well as the complete solution behind this particular question. Thank you.